Welcome to another weekly webinar. Today we're going to be talking about distributed installs and uh, how to set this up with that code meter remote license. All right, quick agenda, pretty basic here. We're going to just talk about, you know, what is a distributed install? What does that look like? And then how to configure that code meter remote license. Okay, so uh, I'm going to hit on this a couple of times. The uh, distributed install KB is is out there and it's on our support site so i'm not going to go super in depth on everything about what a distributed install is i'm just going to give you a quick overview of it but i have this linked here and it'll be linked a couple of times and it will also be sent out in the recorded version that is added to our webinars page with the full kb on everything you need to know about distributed installs but for today's purposes Basically, it's talking about that Win number one can be installed on a single computer, standalone system, everything is there, or distributed over several computers. So uh, let's say, you know, for example, here, allowing email notifications to the internet from a DMZ machine, uh, while the rest of your Win number one resides on your plant network that maybe doesn't have internet. So that's that's kind of the, the umbrella idea here. Um, quick note. Here at the bottom, it is recommended uh, to always install Win Number One as a standalone system. All the modules on the same server, uh, unless your network security requirements demands this use of a distributed option. Now, obviously, this is important for just ease of maintenance, troubleshooting, uh, as well as reducing the dependency on the network and all the variables that go along with that increased complexity. Um, if you don't need to do any distributed installs, you don't have any network requirements or security requirements, keep everything standalone. For the Windman 1, it's a, it's a system of modular components working together to provide an alarm notification, information access. So these modules belong to one of the following categories, right? We have notifiers. These manage the contact points, uh, interaction with notification providers, and they handle the runtime interaction with end users. Essentially, that's a fancy way of saying these are your email, SMS, voice, and mobile app notifiers. All right, now we have sources. This manages the alarm and data points and interact with the SCADA. So your source is Rockwell Factory Talk or GE iFix or Wonderware, OPC, whatever your SCADA source is. And then we have the support side, which is, you know, this manages the strategic notifications, uh, reporting, other functions that bring together the source and notifiers. So we're talking about the dispatcher, right? Uh, what rules are you creating? What uh, strategies and tactics? have you created? Who's going to get called? That's all the dispatcher's job. Uh, so you can see here, very basic, bare bones, server one has everything on it in this diagram. We have your, your SCADA source, dispatcher, and email, voice, and mobile all on the same machine. That's your typical install. So distributed, what we're doing is moving one of those or multiple of those modules off to another machine. So you can see here on the right, Everything is still on there, except we move mobile out to a second server, right? So again, why would you do this? Maybe the rest of your network uh, that Win Number One is on is locked down from the internet. You don't have access out to the internet to do emails or the mobile app or whatever the case may be. So we throw another server out there and install the mobile module specifically on that in this example. And then we would route traffic to that through uh, the mobile hub for our new mobile product. And that would have access to the internet and take care of the notifying side. All right, now the other big thing to consider here for the distributed install is SQL Server, right? As you may or may not know, if you've been using Win Number One in our new software, all the configuration is in the SQL databases. So uh, in addition to distributing the Win Number One modules, the Microsoft SQL Server instance or instances hosting the Win Number One configuration, they can reside on any of those Win Number One host machines. Or, just, or be distributed onto um, a separate physical machine, right? So I will tell you from personal experience and for troubleshooting for, for many, many years, um, I personally prefer all of the SQL databases on one machine. So if you're gonna do a distributed install and you're throwing the mobile or the email, whatever module it is out on another machine, keep everything on that main host that has the dispatcher, your source, everything else on it. Um, that way you don't have to go in and manage two different SQL servers. It's two different sets of permissions for the accounts on both of those machines, right? Everything is going to be on that one machine as far as the SQL server and configuration goes. And that remote machine, 
when you do the install, it just knows to call back and it's configured with the IP address of that host Win 91 machine for its configuration. That's how I would recommend doing it. But the second paragraph, you know, more information can be found uh, on an article. We have Win 91 best practices for SQL Server. My recommendation might not fit for your situation. So again, consult with your organization's IT department. Uh, determine if it's the best way to do it all on one or distribute it to where you would have that that mobile or that email module have its own SQL database alone on that same machine. Uh, and again here, distributed install KB, it goes through all this in much more detail. Um, and that will be linked at the end with resources as well. Now, this is the, uh, the real kind of nitty gritty and, and better information for the code meter software. So uh, a quick background here. If you're, if you're familiar with Win91, you know that the code meter software, it's a third party software. We don't make it, we just use it for the licensing. So when you install Win911, it deploys that code meter control center on the machine. And then a permanent license container is keyed to that local hardware. So, you know, your your memory on the machine, the motherboard, the, the hard drive, um, all the information about that machine is keyed to that uh, code meter license that we give you. So then, you know, the question comes up, well, if I'm doing a distributed install, do I need two licenses? Because I got Win91 here and I got Win91 over there for this other module I installed. No, you do not need two licenses. That's the good news. So this is going to go through and, and help you guys understand how to configure this to where you installed Win911 module on a different machine, and you're going to point that code meter on that machine back to the main install. So you only need the one license. So a license from one computer will not function on another one. You can't just transfer it and flop it over because, again, it's tied to that hardware, but it can be utilized across the network. So code meter license server uses an IP port, which is the default is 22350. There's really no need to change that unless for some reason uh, in, in your environment you're blocking everything uh, except certain ports. Uh, but that's what it uses to communicate between you know, the machine that, that code meter is installed on and the rest of the network. So obviously make sure your firewall is not blocking this. Um, enable the used IP port 22350, and it's in there by default. You, you don't have to remember this number and type it in. It's, it's going to be in there, and I'll show you that later. Um, but make sure your firewall is not blocking it. Okay, so now we're going to get into this code meter remote license configuration. So on the machine where Win91 is licensed, uh, or the license is going to be activated, you're going to open that control meter control center. Um, now this is running in your system tray icons if Win91 is installed. Uh, if, it's, if it's not there and it's not running, you can just click the start button and type code meter. It'll pop up. And this window down here is what it looks like. And the first thing you're going to do is click on that web admin button down here on the bottom right. And that pops up. It's going to come up to a web browser automatically. It should ask you if you want to use IE or Chrome or whatever you want. Um, in that web browser, you're going to navigate to configuration, server, and server access. And all you have to do is enable the network server, click apply, close that browser. Um, very important, you have to go back to the code meter uh, control center and then click file quit and relaunch it. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute here. But so you click on the web admin, it opens up the browser, configure server, server access, turn it on, close the browser, file quit, and relaunch your code meter. All right, so now referencing this, this network server you just set up right on your main Win91 machine that has most of the modules and the dispatcher and everything. So on that remote Win911 machine, you're going to open its control meter control center. Same thing. Launch its web admin portal. Same button. Navigate in this to configuration basic server search list. Okay, let me screenshot down here. And it looks like this. And there, there shouldn't be anything in here if you haven't ever added anything. It, that doesn't matter. We're going to get into what, how you're going to set this up for your situation. So we're on the remote machine, we're in the web GUI, and we're in the server search list right here. Now you're going to click add new server and just give it the host name or the IP of that other Win91 machine that is your main host with all of the other modules, the one you just set up as the server. Okay, put the IP or the host name in, click apply. And that's it. Again, important, exit that code meter control center by doing a file quit, relaunch it. 
Um, and then this is also very important. You need to delete any of those local license containers on this remote instance. So essentially what, what happens is, um, you, know, you can see on the, on the bottom left screenshot over here, there's a, there's a license container in there. If you set this up to go talk to the server that has the main license and you have another container in here, whether that's the demo it comes with or an empty container, it's not going to reach out to the server for its, its configuration. It's, it's going to try to load its own container. So what you want to do is in that same window, just highlight each container that still exists. You might have demo and an empty or just an empty, whatever you have in your situation. Highlight it and click remove license so that you get a blank screen over here. Now at runtime, it sees that it has no license containers locally and that you've already set it up to talk to the IP address of the main server. It's going to go there and pull its config and, and you're going to be good to go. All right, so now we're going to go to the demo, um, and I will preface this with my machine uh, running a webinar and two VMs is not ideal. So <laughs> I haven't paused right now. Um, let's see if this will work. I do apologize if there's a big delay, but just bear with me here. I wanted to show you on two different machines so that I'm not just kind of going through the motions. I want to show you exactly what it looks like. This is my main Win911 server that I'm on right now. Uh, this is the one that I'm going to set to be the server. So step one here, again, code meter should be running here in your system tray icons. But let's say it's not for whatever reason. You could also just click over here and code meter control center. There you go. You can see I have my license. Click on the web admin. Automatically takes you here. And then we're just going to configuration, server, server access. Click enable. There's your default port and apply. Pretty simple, nice and clean. Close that out. And then you're going to do a file quit and launch it again, code meter. There you go. And if you, if you want to, you can go through and check the events. You should now see something that says, um, Something about the server IP address here locally. So we're using this port, obviously the default port, run a system service. Um, yep, yeah, uh, so now it's, it's basically just showing access over LAN to this machine. So now this is showing that this is the server over the LAN. Uh, you shouldn't have to do that, but I mean, if you get an error or something, you can always look at the events here. But that's it from the server side. So now it's set up as your server. So we're going to go to the second machine. This is one that maybe you've deployed that mobile, that email, that voice module, whatever you need on that remote machine. We're going to go through those steps. So control center for a code meter. You can see here, maybe I just installed this demo and an empty container, right? So we're going to go to web admin. All right, configuration, basic, search server list, all right. So this usually is blank. I've done some testing. This is just a broadcast, so I can delete that. Um, you can do add new server, and then what are we going to do in here? Well, we need to know the IP address of our main machine that we just set up as the server. So you can go to command prompt if you don't know it, IP config, and we got our IP here on the LAN. Copy that. Throw it in there. Click add. And apply. Should save it, let you know when it's done, and close it out. Then we're going to remove these. So it's nice and empty. File quit and launch it again. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Now this machine is looking back to that server that you just set up on the other machine for its license information. And you can see in here in the events, remote access over LAN to that other IP address. Okay. Um, and then it's going through and, and showing that the handles are released. So you'd be getting a lot of ugly errors here if it wasn't accessible. Um, obviously go down the troubleshooting route of you know your network guys, maybe that port is blocked. You can try a telnet or a trace route or you know have your network guys take a look at it make sure that port is open but that is essentially it 
So now this guy's looking to the server for its license info. You don't need a second license. All right, let's go over just a couple more slides here. So we have uh, webinars on deck for those of you just recently joining us or have been doing this weekly webinar. Next week, we have Win 911 and Rockwell Factory Talk Alarm and Events, Best Practices, April 15th, 10.30 Central. And then right after that, we're going to do uh, the Install Tips and Tricks webinar again. I just did this one in February, but uh, I think it's just worth going over again. Uh, that'll be April 22nd at 10.30. And then some resources here. Um, this is all just straight from our website. Just go to our website, go to resources. We got documentation, how-to videos, webinars. Uh, this support solutions is our KB articles. And then specifically for the distributed install, that's this link here. Uh, but you can just go to the KB article page and just type in distributed. It'll come up for you. I do appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. And uh, look out for next week's webinar and send me an email directly if you have any other issues. Thank you.